Good day to all the value hounds out there. This is ETF Investing Australia, the weekly overview show. We're going to focus on the week for the 15th to the 19th of July. As always, we are checking out the ins and outs and the ups and downs and sideways of the mighty exchange traded funds on the ASX. Hello, my little value hounds. This is Scott. I'm the guy that wants to crack your financial sky. I've been listening, I've been watching, and I know that there's a great majority of you guys out there that are scared to invest. Mainly because you think you're gonna lose all your goddamn money. What I'm trying to do here is show you guys that it's not as hard as it looks. You know, I want to give you guys some more information and give you the uh, courage to take those steps to create your own destiny, effectively. So I hope that I can help you guys take that leap and start making, um, building your financial freedom and your financial future. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing uh, and you think I'm adding some value uh, to your life uh, with these little videos, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Greatly appreciated. Have a great day and let's invest and crack your sky. Okay, my little value hounds, let's take a quick look at the ASX ETF top performers for last week. So top ETFs by one week total return, we saw in number one position here, uh, the ETFs physical silver uh, with the code ETPM8G uh, up 7.1%. So he's seeing silver on the up here. So people are looking for a hedge against uncertain times as per usual. So that ETF holds a physical silver uh, from memory and uh, the HSBC Bank in the United States of America. Uh, Beta shares Global Gold Mines ETF hedged MNRS uh, up 6.3%, uh, I should say. Van Eck Vectors Gold Mines ETF, uh, which is GDX, up 6.2%. ETFs so Physical Platinum uh, with the code ETPM. PT up 3.8%. Uh, Finally, here at number five, we've got the British shares US equities, uh, Strong Bear HF uh, hedged uh, with the curve there of BBUS up 3.1%. Uh, so, top four performers are all metals or miners orientated there. So, we've seen people looking for that safe haven type of play. Top ETFs by a 12 month total return. We're looking at the Beta Shares Geared Australia Equity Fund uh, with the code GEAR up 51.9%. Beta Shares Geared US Equity Fund uh, currency hedged has a code GGUS up 44.8%. Up next here, we can see uh, Van Eck Vectors Gold Mines ETF GDX up 32.1%. Uh, that would come in the number third position of the weekly total returns there. On the left-hand side, uh, follow up there by Beta Shares Global Gold Miners ETF Hedge MNRS, which is also uh, figured in the number two spot. Um, the total weekly returns as well. Uh, number five position here with Beta Shares S&P ASX 200 Resources Sector ETF QRE up 28.2% for the year. So dominated. Um, geared um, type equity funds and also metals and miners. Uh, so people looking for, to take advantage, I should say, of uh, metals and miners um, typically. Moving on. Okay, thank you, Value House. Let's take a look at the ASX ETF money flows. Where is the money going last week? Top ETFs by one week flows. We saw the number one position here is the Beta Shares Australia High Interest Cash ETF, AAA, very popular. We saw 60, sorry, $36.1 million of inflows. Follow up here, number two position is the iShares S&P ASX 200 ETF with, with the code IOZ. So we saw $24.4 million inflows for that ETF. I uh, shares core composite bond ETF IAF, $17 million of inflows. B 
Philly Shares Active Australian Hybrids Fund, HBRD, the code there, we saw $12.5 million of inflows. So definitely people looking at fixed interest type products. Oh, sorry, and um, uh, cred there, we saw $10.8 million inflows. So typically people looking at that fixed interest type of play there trying to um, play for safety, I suppose. The top ETS by year to date flows. Let's check this out. No surprises here. We saw the BT, uh, sorry, Beta Shares Australia High Interest Cash ETF AAA. Total year to date inflows of $318.2 million. Quite impressive. Up next here, we saw Vanguard Share Index ETF VAS with uh, $252.6 million in flows a year to date. Vanguard MSCI Index International Series VGS is uh, prominent here in number three position with $231.5 million in flows, followed up closely here by the Vanguard Australia Fixed Interest Index VAF, $208.3 million in flow. In the uh, number five position here, we can see iShares Core Composite Bond ETF IAF inflows totaling $194.9 million. Yeah, so just for a quick recap, I think uh, AAA, uh, the, all the high, weekly, high amount of weekly inflows and also high amount of year-to-date year inflows. And that reflects people looking for a safe haven for their cash. So triple A's, uh, you could kind of look at that one as a bank account, um, but via ETF, because that one uh, invests in high interest bank accounts uh, in banks such as ANZ, CBA, uh, NAB and the like. So uh, as a wholesale customer, the uh, ETF provider can get a higher cash rate. So you get about... 2% or thereabouts on your money, or as a dividend, uh, I should say, if you're investing that fund. Let's move along. Let's check it out, the ASX ETF trading volumes. So where have the, the volumes been uh, last week? So the top ETFs by one week average daily turnover. We saw the State Street Spider S&B ASX 200 fund with a code here of SDW. We saw turnovers of $17.1 million, followed up uh, by AAA, which is the Beta Shares Australia High Interest Cash ETF. Total uh, turnover here of $15.2 million. Up next, we saw Beta Shares Australia uh, 200 ETF. Uh, code here is A200. This is a, um, a nice little fund if you're looking for exposure into the ASX 200. We saw a, a daily turn, average turnover here of $10.4 million for the last week. Vanguard Australia Share Index ETF, uh, ticket code here of VAS, we saw $10 million of average daily turnover. Quite tidy indeed. Number five position here, Vanguard Australia Property Securities Index uh, ETF with a ticket code here, VAP. We saw an average daily turnover of $8.7 million. Unfortunately, that is on the downside. So uh, people are getting out of that uh, ETF. I still quite like that ETF, but I think there's been a few changes. I'm still trying to nut out what the hell is going on with that and why everyone's getting out of it. Let's tick along over to top ETFs by year to date average daily turnover. We can see here the number one slot uh, is the State Street Spider S&P ASX 200 fund with a ticket code of STW. Average daily turnover here uh, year to date is $14.6 million. Beta Shares Australia High Interest Cash ETF AAA. Uh, comes in at number two with $13.2 million. Up next is Vanguard Australia ETF index. Uh, BAS, we have an average uh, daily turnover each day here of $11.2 million. iShares Core S&P 500 with the IV ticket code here. We can see uh, $6.7 million uh, use of average daily turnover. In the number five position here, we can see the Beta Shares Australia 200 ETF A200. 
uh, year to date average daily turnover of $5.7 million. As mentioned, that one is becoming a popular ETF. So we have a quick look at the week. The highlights have touched on uh, some of these aspects already. So global equities end of the week or lower uh, on ongoing political risk, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, people worry about the economy, rah, 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 rah. Something's always going on. Someone's always worried about something. So as mentioned uh, before, the precious metals, um, you know, mining ETFs and that type of stuff were up. They were benefiting from the ongoing uh, bad news in the general world. Uh, spot gold was up 0.7%, so six year highs. It constantly seems to be hitting a high every week, obviously. Uh, silver was up 6.4%. So as touched on before, you saw the gold ETFs uh, and the mining ETFs up uh, throughout last week. So total flows into domestically Domicile ETFs were $199 million. Outflows were $35 million. As touched on before, with the fixed interest bond type um, ETFs, such as AAA, IAF, Hybrid, Cred, and ISEC, and that's where most of the biggest flows were heading into. So gold, GLD, also saw sort of stronger flows. The largest outflows were from UBA. So SW and AAA were the most traded funds last week, while AAA and VHY also saw above average volumes. Uh, so yeah, pretty much as we touched on. Um, you know, when we're, when we're investing in these ETFs, we always look at these things uh, in a larger time frame, I don't look at these. It's just pretty much the same as what I do in any any investment. I don't look for at tomorrow. I look at five to ten year uh, time frames. And when we're investing, you know, we can even look at it on on longer time frames because we're younger. So I mean, if you're in your twenties um, or thirties, you know, you got uh, 30, 40 years of investment time frame in front of you. So we shouldn't particularly be worrying about the uh, machinations of political ups and downs um, in, the, in this year and worrying about what's going to happen in five to ten years time because owning these ETFs, a uh, good good diversified portfolio of ETFs, it'll all even out over the long term anyway. Cool, thanks guys. Ciao. Yeah, so this is our standard disclaimer. We're not promoting any particular product here, purely informational purposes to give you guys an overview on the market and, and what's happening. Uh, we all, always need to do our own research. Uh, so you don't want to be buying one product just because you've only looked at one product. And you also, you know, you need to take your own personal financial objectives into account and where needed, get additional advice from a professional. Hey, thanks for taking the time uh, and sticking around to the end of the video. I enjoy producing these videos for you guys. I actually learn a lot of information myself. Uh, it keeps me up to date with what's happening in the market. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe, also jingle the bell. Uh, that'll let you know when the next video is coming. Greatly appreciate your time once again. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Ciao.